I am the head of content at High Times. For the last five years, my job has basically been trying to make sure that the culture is properly represented in yeah. what is one of the biggest voices in our community. Everything is about what's happening online now. But back in the day, and like just having the magazine, like actually being able to hold something, I feel like that's something that we're losing. It touches on a bunch of different things, but one of those is like, why do I keep getting shadow banned or kicked off of the platforms? And it's crazy to me that people still don't understand that like to make an analogy of this, it's like we're selling weed in somebody else's living room. The long and the short of it is we're in a industry that's maturing and coming out of prohibition. So the same way for when alcohol was legalized, it wasn't like Jack Daniels was just on the shelf and pretty branded, right? Like there was trials and tribulations that they had to go through. And we probably have another five to 10 years of normalizing this industry. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Got myself here, co-host Brian. What's up everybody? And our new friend, John Capetta. John, What's up, welcome everybody? bro. It's not my new friend. It's my <laughs> older <laughs> friend of mine, it's Brian. Thanks for friend. having me. Yeah, so uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, John. We met through cannabis, obviously. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You're a journalist and you've so covered something for me before. Currently, you... I am the head of content at High Times. And there you so go. that has been, for the last five years, my job has basically been trying to make sure that the culture is properly represented in yeah. what is one of the biggest voices in our community and uh it's been a really cool ride i've gotten to meet tons of great people like yourself um smoke some really awesome weed which is always good in my book and uh yeah have some really cool conversations help actually bring about some of this change that we're seeing so it's been uh, it's been an exciting ride so far yeah growing up high times was like uh being in love with the plant at such a young age, High Times was like the, the coup de gras of everything. You know what I mean? It's like, just, that was our Bible. When I was and in college, yeah. I didn't have Playboy centerfolds on my walls. I had yeah. the High Times centerfolds. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, That's epic. Yeah, and so like to be here now, and obviously, you know, media itself has gone through a lot of changes over the last couple decades. Um, everything is about what's happening online now. Um, but back in the day, and like just having the magazine, like actually being able to hold something, like I feel like that's something that we're losing just in the modern generations Can't too. Touch like, it. Well, you remember like records yep. and like actually being able to hold it and like ha it having weight and like even I a CD, even even a CD, like yeah. listening to a, the whole album. There or was something. art. There was things on it. There was things that you could hold. It was a physical item. You could you could engage with it. Whereas a lot of what's happening online is a little bit more disposable. So being involved with something that has that has gone from the physical to the digital and still remains physical is... So you guys still have a print version? Yeah. yeah it is yeah, still we, in print. Yeah. yeah, we still have a magazine. Um, the dot com is obviously where most of our content goes. The stuff that goes on the, on the magazine is more, I would say, evergreen content. So okay. trying to... Online, because I can post so much, we can be a lot more specific with things, right? I can talk to much more niche audiences. Whereas when I'm printing a magazine that's going out you to the whole country and the whole world. Wide. Exactly, exactly. And like, you know, online it's fun because like, especially in LA, we have like a hyper, like excited, excitable cannabis market down here. It's not like that in the rest of the world or in the rest of this, the country right now. It's, it's evolving. But like, if I'm talking about the things in the magazine that are just like, you know, really only happening in LA, it's not gonna resonate with most of the people. Whereas if we talk about the stuff like, honestly, the biggest thing for us is bud porn. <laughs> like it's the one thing that's yeah. tried and true to back to the point of the centerfolds, yeah. like just showing like beautiful mouthwatering pictures of buds is a never fails for us. Um, but and then- that's on the print edition. That's on the yeah. print edition, but especially on social too. Okay. Like that's like on social media, like videos- you guys get but, throttled by posting that at all? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm actually, so, Part of one of the things that we started at High Times is a column called Weirdos, okay. which is kind of, it's more op-ed pieces that we kind of talk about problems that don't have clear answers, right? So like the first piece I did for it was THC percentage is bullshit. Then we've done Indica Sativa for dummies, things like that. Um, the piece that I'm doing tomorrow is, it's frequently asked questions. So it touches on a bunch of different things, but one of those is like, why do I keep getting shadow banned or kicked off of the platforms? And it's crazy to me that people still don't understand that like, Listen, to, to make an analogy of this, it's like we're selling weed in somebody else's living room. Like we're at somebody's house party, which is the platform, right? Mm -hmm. And we're there trying to sell our wares. Now, 
if we had gone to the homeowner and been like, yo, let me cut you in on this, AKA advertise with them. They'd we, be happy. Yeah, we probably wouldn't have uh, the problems that we're having, but because we're all trying to like- Not pay the couple bucks Yeah, get one past them. Of course they turn the shit down. The other issue is that, listen, all the platforms are cons concerned primarily with their longevity, right? They want to, as, as, as much time on site and still being a part of your life, right? So what the most important users are to them are the kids because that's the longest longevity they have, right? So anything that may be dangerous to that y young population is something that they want to stay as far away from, right? I don't know if you remember a few years ago, but there's all these brand safety issues when talking about advertising on YouTube, yep. because like people's like, you know, like and a brand like black would have an ad up on YouTube, like they were supposed to. And then the thing that would come up after it would be something crazy and like, you know, horrifying. And that wasn't leaving a good impression in oh, the okay. advertisers mouths. Cause it's like, Hey, I don't want my ad to come up to next to something that's horrific. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's a multi-layered issue that like all really comes down to the fact that this is a private platform that like can do whatever it wants to protect itself. So we might not think it's fair and we might not have a burgeoning semi-legal industry that's, that's coming about. But if you think about all the money they're making from the real why, industries. Why jeopardize it? Why jeopardize it? And also we're such small potatoes. Even if we it's all not started- It's on their radar. It's just bad news for the, for the demographic. It is on their radar. Cause yeah. like I've had conversations with the platforms and they're li they've literally said to me, like, even if you were all spending a million dollars, like it's just too small of a pot no, for us to be, for it to make That's sense. That's what I mean, you not know? on their radar. It's like, it's like bottom of the barrel shit. For yeah, them. well, even even liquor companies, right? It's the same thing, or like cigarettes, right? Like those we, those are huge industries, yeah. but they have all sorts of ad restrictions too that like everyone in cannabis kind of forgets about and like likes to play the poor us, you know? But like, listen, there are plenty of people trying to sell lean and guns and shit like that on social. You never hear any of them being like, why do I keep getting deleted, nope. you know? All well, my gun friends, because I'm one of those guys, were like, well, let's see if we get in trouble today. Exactly. You know, and that's, that's the thing that I think people forget. You're is not like, who he was talking about, but yes, no, you no, are in the but actual, he's, but yes. you, you are in the, but in the firearm the community, version, the real firearm. It's community, the same yeah. thing. No, no, but it's the same thing. Yeah. So he, he's not, he's not trapping guns, right? He, but he, trying to, there are plenty of legal firearm businesses that yeah. can't promote themselves in the way yeah, that say Coke yeah. could, could advertise. Right. And like, listen, I think the other thing that everyone forgets is like, just because you get big and get some hype doesn't mean you can lay off on the advertising thing. Like Coca-Cola literally created the modern image of Santa Claus. The reason why he's red and white is because of Coca-Cola advertising, but we still see their ads everywhere because they know the second you take your foot off their necks, then someone's going to come in and take that spot. Oh, right? They're spending billions on advertising. They're the biggest brand in the world for a reason. They, they created advertisement. Exactly. Exactly. And a lot of our industry thinks that social media and posting and influencers is advertising. And like, unfortunately, like, you know, influencers did kind of mess the game up for advertising at large because it used to be like you had to pay to get an ad made and then you had to pay to get it seen. And then like there were some kids that came out and were like, yo, just send me your shit for free and we'll take it and make content with it and a million people will see it and it'll be great. But like, you know, the whole industry, like you need to sustain in other ways. If that's the only thing you're doing, like you're only reaching people who are chilling on Instagram. You know yeah. what I mean? What do you, what about gas station advertising or, or penny savers, stuff like that? The reason why people... TV. Exactly. The reason why people still have to do all of those things, because they call it a marketing mix. You don't know where all of your consumers are going to be. And if you're only targeting them in one place, like you're going to miss a lot of potential consumers. I mean, for our industry, especially in the rec market, Instagram is the last place that you should be advertising. It's because your real rec market consumer that's walking into a, a, a rec store to buy it's not on anything, it. it's not there. They, so that's, that's, it's curious because I think people forget the rec market, how much of it is access shoppers, right? Mm -hmm. People who like would have smoked weed 10 years ago if it were comfortable to go to a store and buy it, you know? And now yeah. that they can do that, that's the only thing they care about. Yeah. Now, a lot of us, you know, especially like the heady boys, right? And like yeah. the, the part of the industry where we sit, like everyone's competing for the top shelf, but they forget that like, there's so many other rooms. I did a panel with, um, I mean, Walmart sells more clothes than, than, than Macy's does, right? That's a great example. Somebody does a collab with Walmart. They're going to I mean, kill it. Didn't they make a lot them? of money. If well, your intention is to create, to touch lives or to touch people well, it's scale. and to make money, it's scale. It's going scale versus yeah. going niche, right? Yeah. So I actually just did a panel the other day and I was just moderating, I wasn't on the panel, but um, Luke from Can was on it. Yeah. And he was talking about how when they first came out, everyone was like, oh, a two milligram, four milligram drink, like, what are you thinking? But he's thinking not that, like, 
He's not reaching the trap. He's no. not trying to talk to the trap. He's trying to talk to like our moms who ate a brownie 20 years ago and, and have been scarred since. Yeah, exactly. And like now that it's legal, we'll dip their toes back in, right? So like there's all this all this room to fit in, but like the way that you actually create that market share is by advertising and getting in front of all of those potential consumers. And so yeah, in the rec market, like, uh, unfortunately, one of the best options you have besides events is like PADs, which mm -hmm. is like time intensive and not as... What's a PAD? P uh, uh, patient like appreciation in, days. It's right. an in-store in demo, basically. Yeah, yes. yeah, basically like... For those that wouldn't know about... Yeah, sorry. Rec yeah. Or cannabis. Uh, <laughs> it, yeah, it, it's the yeah. same <laughs> thing as like, you know, like when you go to Trader Joe's and there's yep. someone there who's like, hey, you want to try Costco, this? Bro. It's like Costco, bro. Giving samples. out samples. Exactly, Got exactly. It. Same thing. Now, with cannabis, though, we can't give out samples no. like that. You can just show it. We can show it. We can do buy one Nations. You can do dollar giveaways. Exactly. You that's, have to sell it though. So that's also the uh, basically it's being in front of somebody and and sending me out to represent the brand and say, yo, this is who we are. This is what we're about. This the is dollar where we samples came from. though, that's the THCA of yeah. the rec market. Like that's like the loophole of like we're not supposed to give them products without being taxed, without it being taxed. So if we only charge them a dollar and give it all to taxes, yeah. then like we should be okay. You know what I mean? But like this is. This is the reality of this industry is that like there's so much infrastructure that just doesn't exist for us. Like, do you know that anyone in the cannabis touching cannabis? And I, I'm sorry to get so far down this rabbit hole, but there's no bankruptcy for protection for any of the brands that are in the space. So like you hear about all of these guys going under all of the time and it's just like, well, why? What's what's happening? What's happening? Because there's nothing for them to do once like once they realize they're in dire straits. It's basically just over for a lot of these guys. And they there's no chapter seven, chapter 11. You're just no. done. Yeah, you have to. I mean, you you're try gonna and sell what you can. Yeah, you're going to brunt the, the bearing of all of that, you know? And like a lot of these guys have investors and stuff like that too. So like they don't even realize like that they owe money to people. Like they can't just close up shop. But like, no, yeah, you said you were going to make this. So now you're responsible for this, you know? Um, it's a... The long and the short of it is we're in a an industry that's maturing and coming out of prohibition. So the same way for when alcohol was legalized, it wasn't like Jack Daniels was just on the shelf and pretty branded, right? Like there was trials and tribulations that they had to go through. And we probably have another five to 10 years of normalizing this industry, which is gonna hurt for a lot of us, right? But the ones that stick it out, the ones that can afford to scrape things together and whatever, like that's gonna be who the kings of tomorrow are. Like the Jack Daniels is gonna be the guys who started right when things went legal and like actually made it like stuck, stuck around, it. you know? Cause again, we're seeing so many people fall. And like one thing that I do wanna say is I do think it's important that we keep in mind in most businesses, most fail. Yeah. Like, so like oh, yeah. it's, we not think, just cannabis, but in general, just it most like businesses. 70% or something. I think it's even higher. I think, I I think it's higher than 90. that over a, a sample of time. And then if you look, they, most of them fail within the first year. Exactly. But then, but thinking about it, we've had a crop that just sold itself forever. So everyone yeah. thought like they were like expert businessmen and knew what they were doing. And now well, it was like, scarce also. It was scarce. Well, that supply and demand is definitely changing everything. Scarcity was, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was room, there was margin because there was, it was, uh, you know, well, there was risk involved too, yeah. right? Like not everyone, like again, like all these access consumers didn't want to get, get their hands dirty. You know what I mean? So now that there's all of this, now that the Wall Street Journal is talking about all the money pouring out of the walls, every opportunist and, you know, Dick and Harry is, yeah, has popped out. That has caused the supply to go through the roof. And the reason why the prices for most things are so low right now is because there's too much a, supply. Yeah, there's a hundred mega grows pumping out, you know, hundreds of pounds of mids a day and they don't have any, anything to do with it. So what do they do? They try and sell it for cheaper and try and sell it for cheaper and try and sell it for cheaper. They but got bills to pay. Big they got bills, bills to pay. pay. But it's like I was saying before, right? Yeah. Like everyone, everyone that like we are connected to is like focusing on the top shelf, right? And they forget that like, like Glasshouse isn't their competitor. Like no. you're never going to be selling a hundred dollar pounds. You know what yeah. I mean? So like, why do you care about the guys who are? And part of the market maturation is understanding that like the kids who are buying the hundred dollar ounce are the same kids that we were when we were in high school and drinking for the first time. Yeah. You're not drinking Everclear now because you know Mad Dog 2020. And yeah, fucking, you, you know, know what the risk, the effect of that is, right? Sainides and, After and wine fucked. coolers and whatever. You hey, know. Do you remember 99 Booms bananas? Farms. That's yeah, the one that scarred bananas. me. Like, I'm a little bit older than you, so I'm going like a little bit before, but basically. Yeah, all of the, the, the bargain bin liquor and stir joints. Anything with too much sugar in yeah, exactly. it, right? Like yeah. once you have that hangover once, you're like, oh wait, like, okay, now I need to step it up a little bit, right? Like that's gonna happen with consumers in this space as yeah. well. But that doesn't happen until they have more hands-on experience with the product. So people are gonna go to the store and 
we also forget most consumers in America are value consumers. Like we were talking about with scale, right? What's the most bang I can get for the buck? 100%. So like even me, if I, when I was in college and I saw a hundred dollar ounce, I would buy that. I would smoke it in probably seven or eight blunts. I wouldn't get very high from it. And then I'd go back to the store and I'd try and find a different hundred dollar ounce to <laughs> that would hopefully get me high. <laughs> After doing that three or four times, you realize like, wait, maybe I should go mark it up a little bit. You know what I mean? So all of this is the natural progression of an industry forming, you know, but uh, yeah, there's just a long way for us to go before we're, you know, I like being able together. to over deliver. Sometimes when you set 100%. your sights too high, people can, you know, nobody likes to, you know, buy something for an exorbitant price and then have it under deliver to their expectations. A hundred percent. That's a lost consumer every time, right? I think the smartest portion of the sector right now is the 40 to $55 eighth guys. Yeah. The guys who are like trying to be under top shelf, but not necessarily quality wise, just like value driven. I want to deliver, bro. That's, I want, and, and unfortunately with the taxes, the way they are and, and the game itself in general, even at that price point, I feel like it's too high for the average consumer. Fair. Let's be honest, 35 to $40 an eighth is what a, a heavy smoker should be able to afford on That's, average. Have you been Somebody to Oklahoma? that smokes. Uh, no, I haven't been out there recently. That's their top shelf. Yeah. They, like, they cannot sell well, for higher than 35. Well, because nobody can afford anything. Exactly. That's how much weed should cost, let's be honest. I, I don't disagree, you I just, know? I think that so also. That's $10 a gram. That's yeah. a fair rate for how fire long bud. Does an eighth last? I depends, think depends on the person. Yeah, I could smoke it. Somebody's smoking a bowl. Like the that's a joint, joint you just saw me roll was probably two grams. Yeah. So like that's more than half of it. That's eighth. a hog for oh, me. Oh shit. I'd be smoking an eighth and 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 two joints. That's yeah. a, not even a night. You know what I mean? We Got could it. go through ten grams just smoking if we're smoking. But exactly. For most people, they can't do that. Exactly. And some people smoke out of a bong or a pipe or other methods. If you're rolling, obviously you're using more flour and it's burning. It's continuously just burning. 100%. So you could stretch it. But like I said, for most people, they can't afford a hundred dollar eighth. No. Every no, day, know. if they're a smoker or a consumer, there's that's, a, there's a no. That's three grand a month in weed. Exactly. Well, we forget, and this is the I try and point this out to people. Like when we talk about the super top shelf, and like I don't even want to say the prices because I know that like people who are going to see this are just going to get offended that it even exists. But like the guys who are buying those cash tree Nemo elephants growth ounces, like I'm pretty convinced that it's like it's literally the top of the dealer pyramid mm -hmm. that is just like buying it to show their market that they have access. So yeah. like it's like an ad campaign that they don't understand is an ad campaign. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I know every, I, I know all about it, but it's it's it is fine. And I'm not mad at their hustle either. No, I mean I support it. Again, and I love when people get mad or I have other guys that are obviously have a scale that's not easily like all right, bro. If you got if you got ten pounds, can you break it down and sell it into a, a different in, for a higher dollar amount? Of course, you have the time to be able to do that, or the yeah. marketplace, and maybe the product's actually worth it. You know what I mean? I don't want to say anything about anybody. I'm just going to say that maybe the product is actually worth it, and it is small batch, and it is that scarce. I think if worth you got it is relative, though, right? A like thousand if, lights, you feasibly can't do that. It's not possible. No, there's no, no, not no. enough customer. A hundred percent to be able to pay that price. A hundred percent. But it's also it's relative, right? Like yeah. so for me, like. If I'm talking about one of those high end ounces, that's like double the price of what I paid for my first apartment. Yeah. Like that's crazy for an ounce of weed or literally half the price of an ounce, a half ounce or a roof over my head for 30 days is like, just, they're not. That's insane. Yeah. It's not comparative. Right. So for people who like, can't. Was it worth the money? Yeah. Are different different conversation. Got it. I, it's it's Gucci, right? But okay. like the difference is Gucci customers are buying Gucci because it's Gucci. it has it's better quality and because like yeah because like the 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 Gucci name. Whereas this is basically just selling on the name right now. Got it's it. like it's not that the weed is not good. It's more that there's so little of it available, and there are a, a chunk of people who are calling it the best weed in the world. They might all be involved in the process, which is they're financially motivated to say that. Yeah. But because of that, and because to Chauncey's point, there are so few ounces of this available, they will always find their it customers. It can demand that dollar. Yeah, because they're only getting rid of like four pounds. You know what I mean? So Got it's it. like, okay, boom, I need to get rid of like however many ounces that is. And I don't, that's under a hundred people. You know what I mean? Whereas So like, that's an easier sell. Exactly. Versus trying to reach But 2, a marketplace has exactly. Casio and it has Richard yeah. Mille. Exactly. And exactly. it has AP and it has Rolex and it has Omega and some over deliver. Omega is a price point where you're talking about. It's yep. something that is like a connected that makes a really good timepiece. It's probably undervalued. Maybe maybe Connect is not the best the well, best. But that's that actually is because, thing because they play to the market, right? Like that's 
they're not going and trying to get as much as they can from you. And that's, that's another but thing. But that, that brand think, created luxury recreational cannabis too. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. But they, but it's, it's attainable luxury. Yes. And like, that's the thing that I think that people is, is can missing. touch that on a regular basis. Exactly. Yeah. It might be the nice thing that you get. Like when you buy the nice bottle of wine, you're not, oh, you're usually oh. drinking two buck Chuck, but exactly. you buy this where when two you want to have that shit. Most have, people like, don't you know what I'm talking about when I say that. Oh really? That Charles Schwab, baby. <laughs> Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's. Come on. Um, and I, but you're right. But you're right. hundred percent. It's, it's just a, uh, to get back to the point where initially, where I was initially talking is that the middle of the market is like, so few people are like actually understanding that like, yeah. that's where the scale is going to be. Oh long-term. yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Like whoever, whoever, whoever nails the pre-roll prac, it's a wrap, bro. That's, have you seen Heady Heads? Uh, he's the guy that was familiar. doing, he's the guy that was doing 3.5 joints and like in packs. Yeah. 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 They are crazy. Yeah. He's got great weed in there yeah. and like, he's keeping yeah, them at like relatively. Whoever nails the pre-roll and different, and different sizes that that's like, it's too easy. It's, I find myself smoking our dog walkers and shit just because it's easy. I don't have to think about anything. hundred I know it's my weed. I know it's fire. I know it's sacrilegious for me to say, but like I it's smoke easy. pre-rolls more often now because it's, it's just, I can grab easy it and use. pop it out you of the You can tube. just pop it out of the thing. Exactly. And I'm busy. It fits you know in a I purse. Mean? It fits in a wallet. It fits in this, a little pocket, whatever. It's easy. Exactly. Taking time to roll even five joints. Like let's say I smoke like five yeah. to 10 joints a day, right? Like if that would be like an hour of my time that I have to sit down and roll, which is like not, you know, some days I got that, but some days when I'm running all over the place, it's like, you know, how the fuck am I going to get this done? Yeah. Pre-rolls are they're they're not the best way to experience the flower no but it's the easiest way to consume 100%. in my next to maybe vape pens and like i i do think that as the market evolves we're going to see more like more maturation from those two segments oh, and yeah. edibles yeah. but like less in smoking because we've all been hit for so many years with the anti-smoking propaganda, not necessarily propaganda, yeah. but campaigns of, hey, this is bad for you, this is whatever, that like the kids just accept that. Like, but at the same time, people are smoking pr- spray packs now because like these kids grew up smoking USB sticks that tasted like cotton candy. Yeah. Why wouldn't they want their weed to taste like, you know? It's an evolution of a market. Well. It's, okay. it's okay. It's just part of the evolution. 100%. Um, I'm not like super anti it. I like, uh, I obviously would prefer natural terp because I'm refined tasting smoker somebody that's entering that realm they might not have the palate for a lot of these flavors anyway so well to the same point of smoking the hundred dollar ounces yeah you will learn that like when shit's crackling when you're smoking it that's usually not a great sign yeah you know what i mean it's also you're not gonna have the best experience it's not gonna burn the best way and you're gonna eventually will i mean jeter's crushing it with i mean everybody's talking about sprayed packs but Je- I see Jeter's like butts of Jeter's in the street. Jeter bro. has been, that's, that's the thing and also that's... that I think people are, are misunderstanding is that like, first of all, people seem to think that spray packs are like just mids that people couldn't move. And so they threw some terps on it. And like now all of a sudden it's moving. Like I mean, no Jeter's are technically sprayed packs. Jeter's are, were the, are like all they the, started that more all or less. the infused shit. That's bang for the buck consumer, yeah. right? Like that's, that's a value shop. Do I want like, my fucking joint dipped in Keef? Absolutely not. It's a mess. I hate it. And it all, I know it all where tastes it came the same. From. It's bullshit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want it, but it's not for me. 100%. But, but hey, I mean, I'm going to have a hard time getting a dispensary to pay me cash for product most of the time. You know, I'm not saying that that's not the case in some cases, but, yo, Jeter doesn't doesn't do credit, bro, and they're on every shelf in yep. the state. So we can see that that model obviously is effective. 100%. And, like, again, like, there's this, this heady boy market that, like, thinks we're so sure about how we consume and, like, we've perfected our experience that we expect everyone to just yeah. know that. And it's like, dog, I was smoking for 10 years before I really understood yeah. what was happening. You know what I mean? And like, granted, I was a heavy smoker and I was young when I started smoking, but like, I can't expect anyone no. to have that kind of understanding without going through that process. Even me, me trying either. to explain it yeah. and impart that information. That's as a know? consumer. I ran a big 215 shop and grew weed for years and years and years, bro, and had access to be buying for a busy, busy dispensary and know like, all of this stuff firsthand. Nobody's ever going to have that experience. Exactly. Very few people in, around the world are going to have the brain about this shit that I have from actually firsthand experiencing it. So we can't, it, you're right. We are all kind of like in that heady industry. It's all kind of like creating for each other and that's exactly. not the customer. Exactly. We're missing the customer. And to be honest, my, my, uh, my want going forward is to over deliver at a price point that makes sense where obviously there's still meat on the bone, but that is over delivering to the consumer. 
so that they're not mad about what they purchased and that they're actually happy about it and that they're getting something that is amazing for a great value and that uh, can touch more people in turn, which is realistically what it's all about, right? A hundred percent. If Coke was priced out, then it wouldn't be a worldwide household name. Well, that's the economics of staying in business, right? Like, yeah. unfortunately, like a lot of people right now are operating in the red because, you know, of the realities of 215 and, or not 215, uh, sorry, uh, 280, 280E, 280E yeah. um, tax law. Um, but I also don't think it's fair for consumers to expect people to go broke providing for them either. And there has been this like pushback, but we're like, what's happening in Oklahoma? We're like, okay, an ounce can't cost $60. Now there's economic reasons why it can't cost $60 in Oklahoma because people can't afford that. It's not sustainable. But in California, uh, people, eight, eight. an eighth, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. In California. Ounces are almost at $60 in Oklahoma, <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. True. <laughs> that's true. For production costs. I actually, I heard somebody told me. They're that they about had, $60. For, I mean, it has somebody, some of the lowest production costs for indoor in the world. And uh, Somebody told I've me an ounce that, of live resin for 80 bucks. I mean, like, I mean, most, how is anyone most facilities have been not processing trim for quite a long time now because the price has gone so downhill that it's just not worth it anymore. Same thing as distillate. It's yeah. cheaper to and buy. And before the producer. THCA, like, like, uh, like the isolate craze and all the dips and infused stuff, that's what brought it back anyway, because the yep. concentrate market, it died with the hash wave and BHL was never going to be around again Yep. because it just became a, a, one. It's, it's not worth running a type seven. I mean, it's a, it's a flammable product. They blow up. They're blast proof, but they're, you know, not yeah, to the, yeah, peop but not to the people happens. inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it is a, it is a dangerous yeah. thing. It's a volatile chemical. It's one of the most volatile chemicals on the face of the planet, you know? So, um, yeah, it got to a point where people didn't even, you know, it's not worth making anymore. And Hey, there's some fire ass, you know, I come from the BHO market, obviously being in a, in Los Angeles, Whoa. we were known for that at our shop. That's what we were known for was, was, uh, was concentrates and, uh, you know, I, you know, the hash guys get offended about it, but like you go back a little ways and there's, you know, when you put fire material in, you get fire material out and some of it's pretty fucking good. I think a lot of it is also just like so much of this industry is like misled by bro science. So yeah. like there are kids who literally think because it's BHO, like I don't want to smoke butane. Like dog like, you're you're it is a cleaner product yeah yeah but if they don't if you don't realize that like you're not being served butane mm -hmm. like that's like what's bho for the normal person so butane is butane, butane hash, hash oil, oil. Okay. but like the butane, butane is purged is the, the, out of the process it's the solvent yeah, in yeah. the in the uh, equation to pull the try it's super heavy science no but, but most, most uh, all types of extractions happen and a lot of them are with some bad solvents. Yeah. Well, it's also we could people, be any type of oil that yeah. you're extracting on any type of plant. We but, also love to say solventless as if water is not a solvent. Water like, is a solvent. Yeah, exactly. So how is it solventless? Water is not an organic compound either. So there is no fucking organic. Let's go there that, for a second. It's, <laughs> that's that, that's the, it's the buzzwords of that's this the, industry, yeah, that's right? the part. And yeah. also because we don't have like I don't even know who the body is that like certifies whether or not you could say something's organic, but like they won't even talk to us. So like these kids are just saying fucking organic because they're not getting their hands slapped yet you know what i mean yeah. and again this is all part of the emerging industry like i imagine back in the day like when fucking right after prohibition there were dudes on the street being like hey buy my liquor you know what i mean it's my brand or whatever and it was just some bullshit fermentation that they did in their basement that like actually made you sick not like made you have fun well you know you the know? you know the they poisoned did you have you ever read that study about that no oh so the uh so the the I'm not sure if it was the ATF at the time, but so during prohibition, the government actually had a, a whatever agency, I don't want to say the government because that's a blanket term, but the alphabet there was, people. there was somebody that got busted for, and this came out, is that they were basically, they backdoored some poisonous shit to dudes that were making, making product and they poisoned a whole bunch of people. And this was a campaign to make people stop drinking alcohol because they feared that you could get sick or die from it. So like vitamin E, e acetate? They basically poisoned a bunch of people, killed people, and that was a campaign on how to stop this from happening. That's, right? that's popcorn lung. That's yeah. what they did to us. Like yeah. that's, so I don't want to get too down the conspiracy rabbit hole, but like this is, there are, there are so many, this is like, I basically went through like the whole piece I'm doing for tomorrow. Um, but 
people forget that like the reason why we're just going to schedule three is because cannabis doesn't spend enough money lobbying. Yeah. All, the reason why Benzos are schedule four is because they have spent tons of money buying politicians. Benzos, which is so addictive that the withdrawals can actually kill you. This guy's a compound pharmacist. There you go, right? Yeah. The reason a real, Benzos, a real compound pharmacist. So the reason Benzos are schedule four is because paid a lot people like you have paid a lot of money to make sure that like it stays in. Not people like him, but yeah. You know, I right. remember when I started practicing and tramadol wasn't even a controlled substance. So that's actually, okay, you want to talk about something really fucking conspiracy theory? <laughs> Do you know about like all the designer like 2CI and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're not on the schedule. They're not scheduled yet, right? That means that the fake polka dot bars on the street that people are buying without mushrooms in it are more legal than the real polka dot bars on the street. Of course. That's fucking crazy to me. That's you could say you can be poisoned. And again, not that polka dot bars are legal in the first place, but that the legal version of it yeah. is the is the, you know, designer drug one. Let me speak on that for a second, just for my feelings on it. We've talked about it because yeah. we like psilocybin. And oh, uh, I love psilocybin. I'm not and, knocking uh, that. I don't like psilocybin and chocolate. I don't like fair delivery systems that are marketed can... towards children. Okay, yeah. I don't disagree with that. I you think know what that, I mean? I think that mushrooms just taste so bad and that No, no, no. I want them to and, be into I something. capsules. Well, yeah, for sure. But I, I just ways. mean gummies and chocolates have been like something that like the oh, cannabis industry yeah, like yeah, literally yeah. laid the foundation on. Yeah. So it was just like, hey, let's sub this in. I'm not but pointing I agree fingers at anybody. I think that it's great that the youth is, is getting on a wave that is better for them. Yeah. That also expands your mind. I'm all there for it. I will also say that, like, I don't necessarily subscribe to the whole microdosing thing. Like, I definitely, like, I can feel good from it. I don't know if it's healthy for you to be doing all the time. Um, we don't know. Yeah, exactly. Nobody knows. Exactly. It's early, it's early on the shit. But I'm not what telling scares somebody it should me, be a way of life. But what's, what scares me, though, is a consumer thinking that they're buying psilocybin and getting this 2CI yeah. or whatever. And, like, again... We don't know. There's no hasn't been enough clinical trials for this shit, so we don't know what it what can spaz out in those kind of things, right? Like maybe like so. For example, acid. If you have a history of mental illness or, or uh, um, I don't know why I can't schizophrenia. schizophrenia. Yeah. yeah, that could that could bring that out, right? It, it causes manic episodes in somebody that's predisposed. Exactly. So, so they say, oh, this guy did it and he never recovered. Most likely, later on in his life, he was going to develop psychosis. This fast track. This, exactly. Yeah. Pulled it right out of him, right? Psilocybin. I mean, people have cannabis episodes well, like that from true. certain things. True. Yes. And psilocybin absolutely you Psychoactive can freak out from. Psychoactive compounds, yeah. But they think they're consuming psilocybin. What is 2CI going to do to them? Or what is, and that's not just 2CI, it's <laughs> a few know. other ones. That's, that's what knows. scares me. You yeah. know what I mean? No, it's like right. same thing. Remember back in the day when uh, everyone was mad about, or worried about bath salts, the yep. turning into zombies and stuff like that? Like, I feel like that's, like, we're just so desperate to create well, a new eye. it wasn't bath salts, eye. it was fentanyl, and they're all over the streets now. Is that, was that what well, bath salts then, was? No, it's not. I'm just saying. Oh, it I was like. bath salts that they had to worry about. It's fentanyl. Oh, yeah, yeah, 100 I was like, holy shit, if bath go salts are fentanyl, MacArthur this shit's been going on way longer than I realized. No, go hit MacArthur Park and you'll see the, you'll see the zombies. You I know? tell my Dude, friends when they come to town. The day, bro. It's sad, bro. I, I remember a few years back, there was a cop standing on the side of the street there, and I was at a stoplight driving, driving down uh, to Pico on. I guess I was on Western. And uh, is, that, is that the street? Western? Yep, Western. Yeah, Western, yeah. So I was on Western right there at a stoplight. And just the scene was just crazy, bro. It was like during COVID too, so it was like extra bad because yeah, nobody yeah. was on the street but them basically. And you could just see like fucking zombie land. And I just looked at this, this LAPD officer and I just like... And he's like, he's like, I don't fucking know, bro. I'm just standing here because they told me to basically. And I'm like, that's where we're at, bro. That's, that's where they can't we're do at anything. because nobody has an answer for this shit. Nobody has an answer. And also yeah. like, they don't even, I don't know how often this happens around here, but like in Venice is where, where I live. Um, they don't even arrest the homeless anymore unless they actually do something assault because they know they're just going to get right out. Yeah. So it's like they'll oh, come and they'll they yell just, at them. They just cite you. It's all about exactly. yeah. it. It's crazy. It's actually the craziest part about it is the only people getting tickets right now are the ones who can afford to pay it, of which course. is constantly like, okay, so we got to bear the brunt of everything right of now. Of course. Um, Bend over. But yeah. Exactly. Welcome to the game. Why, what's Fortune. the point of, per, you know, well, they're that, not going to abide by the rules. So that's actually so it's that a clusterfuck of america at this point to but that's tie the, in the, the, the final point yeah. on the weirdos tomorrow uh, is about the trap and how the trap's gonna last forever because just because you make something legal doesn't mean all these guys that were used to operating illegally are gonna magically start following the rules why would they you know what i mean exactly like it's just this is this is their no, way no, of no, life. No. they did that themselves because all of those For guys sure. would have followed the rules if the barrier for entry was 
fair. Yes and no. I mean, I still think yes that no. plenty they of them try, would try, bro. 100%. So listen, I, and we saw them they try. They would try. We saw them try. Yeah. So many people got licenses that are now no longer playing because it costs them so much to get licenses. I mean, you can't, even a social equity license, it's like you can't. It's the biggest scam in the game. The thing is this, is that somebody wants to go open a business and if they have to wait a year and a half and jump through hoops and any business opening any retail business in Los Angeles is hard to do because of building and, and permits and yep. code and everything else. But And if they know you got the money, they'll make you wait. They'll make you wait. It's like, it, I mean, you see all the abandoned buildings around town and you know why that is, is because they don't streamline the process of making community streets and and you know access to easy restaurants and we know it's 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 a clusterfuck it's hard to keep something open you know what i mean 100 percent. and uh bureaucracy has a way of stealing the life out of uh entrepre entrepreneurship right 100 percent. and it and it leaves room only for certain people that can either just squeak by and then and then go up or is obviously a major play from levels of corporatocracy that can afford to wait right 100%. And then take over industries one at a time, you know? Which is what's going to happen in cannabis. And that's actually a thing that I think that most of these guys, everyone's like, oh, the money's already here. The money's already here. Like, we it haven't hasn't even, even started seen yet. the big money yet, yeah. dog. Big money is the one buying up all of the other businesses Scott's around milk, cannabis. It's Scott's miracle yeah, grow, exactly. dog. <laughs> like, it's, We've seen. They, We've seen how they consolidated they, the hydro market. Exactly. And like, you also, see what that is. You know what I'm saying? The thing that like, I think people don't, it's the same thing as what happened with crypto. And right? I'm, not, I'm not the guy that says that that's a bad thing. I like that their eyes are there, ready to buy all the picks and shovels. Because oh, you know what it means? 100%. It means that I'm going to have a farm that I can shovel out of, right? Well, that's what I said when everyone was like, oh, well, if, if Schedule 3 goes to Big Pharma, what's going to happen? And I was like, well, then a bunch of our guys are going to get cashed out, and they're probably going to go blow out some more garages. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not, you think they're just going to stop playing It'll be good the for the game. I, 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 had a friend, I, had, I had a friend that has a big business, and he was like, I should have sold. He had a big offer. He didn't sell. And he was like, and he didn't sell because he said, well, what the fuck am I going to do? Yeah. And I'm like, obviously, I'm like, no, you're just going to take the money and then you're going to go do it again. But yeah. Better. <laughs> I was like, exactly. what do you mean? <laughs> exactly. I wish you would have thought of it like that way, but. I, I think most people forget too, because like there's still this mentality in a lot of people that like, oh, I'm going to hand my business down to my kids or something like that. And like, I respect that. I get that. My but kids I think, don't want to do this. Bro. Yeah. I think your kids would much rather you, have a fat bank account yeah. than a fucking job. I like, can, I can, not to sound like an asshole, but no, like. No, not just that. It's like, there is certain like, like generational stuff and farming up in north northern Humboldt County and stuff 100%. like that. But I, I'm not expecting to build a brand that my kids are gonna wanna are gonna wanna take over. And honestly, a lot of these guys leave these businesses to like people that they picked up that ended up managing, that ended up rising in the company that they yeah. felt comfortable leaving this business to because this shit is hard work, bro. 100%. My kids my kids aren't me. They didn't grow up and live the life that I live, so they don't they ain't ready to put in the type of work that we put in or the hours or the stress or these things. And I don't want that life for them, to be honest. It's, it's a lot, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, this isn't necessarily a generational business. You have, to want, you have to want it in this business. To your point, generational cultivation and like handing down skills, I think is something that like that makes sense to That's me. dope. You know what I, I mean? I can teach them the reins, but 100%. they have to want to show up and do the work. I just, I th also think that like most things, like first of all, the industry is cyclical, right? So people who are on top don't stay on top very long, number one. But number two, like most businesses have their moment and then kind of dwindle. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's very hard. Very, very few continue to rise over time, right? So like, not that I would tell your friend that he should have sold, but like, if you have an exit opportunity and it's something that like you made nothing into something. Take, yeah, he's take a 215 it. Take guy it that, had, that is like well established and he had a, a, a gigantic offer and he wishes he would have sold now that things have flattened out. What was, did he have a bunch of other people involved with him too? Not enough to make sense. He could have made okay. the decision and pulled well, so, the trigger. No, no, the he reason... was afraid of losing his baby. Okay, so I, and I he get was that. also afraid of what's next. But I, I so I see a yeah. bunch of people who like who are have a bunch of partners, and they're like, oh well, yeah, it's a big offer, but I'm only going to get this, so it's not worth selling. And it's like, yeah, but your percentage isn't going to get bigger because you know you keep lasting longer. It might be more money, but you're still only going to get that fraction, no matter what. I just you take end the up money and for. flip it and do something else. Exactly. Exactly. I just go restart this shit the way I should have in the first place because now you have all the experience. That's that's the thing also that our industry needs to understand is like learning from other people's mistakes and not having to pay to learn the same lessons that they did. Like that's the cheat code to business in general. Yeah. So like the more we can learn from each other and like again, like have our best practices. I mean, we've watched 
people melt huge funds already. <laughs> yeah. Medmen. Look at uh, look at, at everything that's happening. This guy, like fucking all the these oligarch. Guys. Yeah, who like killed himself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's some fucking. Because that's the Cookies shit. Melrose store, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the spot. Um, I mean, he got he spent 150 million dollars and opened one store, bro. There's yeah, but he, he had cash flow. So they had other shit. They had that they were CBD water or something like that, or CBD one or something. And let's, that was let's be honest. If you gave me $150 million in the same time frame, I I'd told have them at the time. Share, dog. I told them at the time, I was like, why are you spending all of this effort on CBD water when you've got this cool weed brand that seems to be fucking picking up? I don't think that they I think that they again it was a scale play, right? Like the oh, I can make so much more selling this shit online. The same way these guys who I don't want to say any names, but who have credibility and equity in the cannabis space are fucking their shit up by doing the THCA game. Like you might, and like, listen, obviously not everything we're all doing is totally legal at this point, but I do think that like to some degree because of legalization, we've all been allowed a little bit more breathing room, right? Selling weed online, especially with like a website and trying to do it as if you're all on the up and up and following the law or whatever is slapping the government in the face. And they don't take kindly to that shit. So, like, the well, thing that scares they're me taking the most, notes for sure. They're, well, they're watching all of us, number one. And, but it's, and believe that the internet doesn't ever disappear. So that's number no one. Back from that shit. But what, I, what scares me, first of all, my biggest fear is, like, ever seeing, like, the United States of America versus John Capetta on any paperwork. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm trying to avoid that as much as possible. What I think is really coming is, like, the IRS is, gonna, is keeping tabs and just eventually going to be like, hey, so this is how much money we think you've made. And so this is what you owe us in taxes. And you have no way to tell us you didn't. You know what I mean? Because most people aren't going to be, well, here are my stubs or whatever. Um, so when that day comes, being able to pay that receipt is like going to be sink or swim moment for a lot of these people. And a lot of the guys who I know who are killing it right now are not saving or planning for the future in the right way. They're just, they're enjoying their moment, which I want for everybody, right? But like also you got to remember, like even even taxes, dog, even saving for taxes, like 60% of what you're making right now should be going into a, a vault. You know what I mean? So that you can give it to the governments when the time comes. Like how many, what percentage of the industry you think is actually doing that? I mean, Besides the retailers. I know the retailers are doing good with that. Not 100%. necessarily. A lot of them aren't doing well, that's, good. That's a re yeah, but that's also the reason why a lot of them aren't paying. You yeah. know what I mean? Because that's, the, that's their defense, at least. It's like, yeah. oh, we got to save it for taxes. Well, yeah, well, a lot of it doesn't get put aside. Believe that. Yeah. I mean, it's a business that came out of a gray area, which means that it's not really a business. <laughs> and none of these guys have a very good business background. And we're all and so averse to chads from, that, like, we won't even get well, the pe bringing the people who know. I think they have their place. Me and Kenji talk about I totally that a lot. Agree. Is I totally that, agree. Like, we all have our chads type of deal is what Kenji said. You know, hundred percent. I mean? And in general, you they, can't be you. If Chauncey was fresh money to be, is good. If Chauncey was supposed to be the compliance manager of Squints or Foreign Genetics, would that be the best business move for the Absolutely brand? Absolutely not. Like you got to get nerds for some things. Yeah. Same thing for like accounting and whatever. That's like, not what I do. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. The, a lot of nor people, do I want to it's, it's why the hill has has quieted so much right is because like you had a lot of guys who like were good at growing weed who thought they were businessmen and like unfortunately like and you've they had a lot of businessmen come in that thought they were good at business that have failed as well a hundred percent a hundred percent it's, it's, it's gonna a wild be a marriage. scale it's yeah. gonna be a marriage it's, it has the to be. because again the, the the ones that failed especially the, the chads that came in that failed are like the ones that were also so arrogant that they were like no let me just show you how to do it I've seen a few that actually came in and listen and actually listen this is super going to be super confident or uh, polarizing. But um, did you watch the glass house first smoke interview? I didn't, but I've met him before. So I so I've actually, he actually tried to buy a, a, a store from, uh, from my kids. Okay. Uh, mom's family. So I had met him before he did the glass house thing. And he actually came and looked at a dispensary that I managed and, uh, Hell yeah. and uh, told me his story and where he comes from. And he was a nice guy. Kyle was a nice guy. He came with his uh, grower and uh, his daughter. And uh, they looked at the shop and we talked a little bit. And then he turned into Glass House later on. Word. That deal didn't end up going through. So other than that, I, don't, I know his personal story that he told me yeah, yeah. to my face, his background, where he was from, his Torrance PD, blah, 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 his history. He's in private equity. He lives in so blah, 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 Palos Verdes. I knew that is, stuff. Everyone is so anti this cop in weed that they won't go and figure like no one wants to ask the question of how did this cop get a three billion dollar real estate fund how did he go how did he like develop well he was a special ed teacher yeah. and then he was a cop and then he had three billion dollar real estate he's fund? pretty sharp bro. like 
he's, he he's was, pretty sure he was there's, well spoken to. There are lessons for us to learn from that. Hundred percent. But we are so adverse to like even hearing what I say. And like the reason I asked about the first smoke interview is because one thing that I got from that is like how much they actually want acceptance from us. Like they care. They want the community to like, even if we're not smoking them, to like not hate them. You know what I mean? And unfortunately, I can tell you this personally from knowing a little bit about the guy and meeting him firsthand and hearing his story. Yeah. Is that it wasn't about the money. Because he was good already. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 100%. For whatever reason it was, is that, is that this was a goal of his. And I'm, I'm sure it's financially beneficial as well. 100%. The play was financially beneficial because he's a businessman and that's what businessmen do. But he could have done something else. 100%. 100%. And listen, he's plugged with Newsom, right? So like another thing, like why aren't cannabis guys trying to buddy up to this guy so that we can get Newsom's ear? So that we can say, hey, these are the things that we need that, like, you're, the state is fucking us on. Yeah. Like, why are why, like? The, I mean, I, I think odds are that odds are that homeboy ends up in the White House at some point. Newsom. Yeah, hundred percent. I've seen that. I know. Like, I know they're trying to do I it. I don't know that if it's going to work, ago. but. And not because I'm into politics, but because. No, I he's said, being positioned for it. hundred percent. No, I said this motherfucker looks the part. He That's goes, true. That's true. And he speaks well. Even if you don't like him, he speaks well. True. Even if you're against his policy, he speaks well and he handles it well when people talk to him. He's giving off hello Obama vibes with the way that he articulates things and, and people react to him, right? And he looks I see the that. part. He looks like a politician. Yeah, for sure. Honestly, I would rather him be the face of the country right now as like the than thing the options than, we than have. what we've had recently. I'm you know still, what I'm saying? I'm still holding on that Michelle Obama is going to come out in the, ninth, in the ninth inning and just be like, ah, oh, yeah. I take just, it, take the country back. I've been traveling a little bit, and obviously we're a little bit of a. It's been a joke for a while. You know what I mean? Like a laughing joke. Oh yeah. And honestly, I would rather be led by an actor or a Ronald Reagan s type of dude, where at least like he knows how to be. He knows how to speak on camera and yeah. look the part and have some regality back to the United States of America, because at the end of the day, that's what people used to want to come here because 100%. we were regal and because we were holding, holding ourselves accountable for, for our actions and this was the land of freedom, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you know, we've always kind of been good at faking that, holding ourselves accountable for our own actions. I mean, you uh, know. Just because of what the, we were talking about the before. Game, what was yeah. the octopus, the octopus yeah. Uh, special? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to get into that at all. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, tape, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Everybody should go watch it, though. It's a great show. Um, Want to talk about the glasses? Let's talk about we've the gone, glasses. We've yeah. gone down a rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you want to talk about Spence a little bit? Sure. So um, I did a collab project with this guy, Spencer. He has a company called Stowed. This I've, was his. Yeah, I've he's been a wearing, great artist. He's an amazing artist. He does all types of things well. I've been wearing these glasses for. They should be called the John Capettas at this point because. <laughs> Exactly. When he showed them to Coast. me first, and, and I said, oh, those are those glasses that Capetta wears. And he says, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, me and Spencer, uh, when I got out of college and I started doing shows in New York, he was uh, a graffiti artist who was, like, he'd come and live paint for us and stuff like that. And we just came, became close. And so, when he said, he, he does incredible work, just with art to begin with, but also just cut Textiles, and sew clothing and stuff. Textiles, cut exactly. He's great. He's a, he's a artist. Exactly. So, yeah. when he said he was coming out with a pair of glasses, like, it's my homie. I'm going to support him no matter what. I did not expect these guys to come out. I like this is by far the most complimented thing I have in my wardrobe. Like just even nobody's seen anything like yeah, it. Yeah, even the little hooks, like they're fantastic. So obviously I started wearing them all the time. They're lower down on the frames. It almost looks upside down. Everything yeah, about right. it is odd, but like in a cool way. But he went deep. Like during when COVID started, he went deep and just like start. Actually, I think he started it before, but um, was looking into all sorts of antique glasses and frames and like figuring out what he likes. Going to like these weird like glasses shops. And uh, yeah, he, these are really incredible. He's working on round two now, but uh, as he was doing that, he started a project with you that uh, this is the first time I'm seeing. Yeah. So he hit me. I met him through a friend of mine, um, Ease Kicks, that we had on the show as Hell well. Yeah. And uh, he had this uh, cool thing that he did with the Liz bag. He made me like an art piece with it. Yeah, That's I remember super that. super dope. And so... Um, he brought, we, we met and he gave me this piece and then we, he showed me the glasses and then he said that, you know, I am working with Italy, obviously your squints. This is the most easy product for you, you know what I mean? I've never done glasses or anything like that, but he, he works with, you know, Italian manufacturers that are doing the highest grade acetate and like real, real craftsman style 
um, glasses, you know what I mean? I actually like that those say on the inside, made in Italy. Yeah. Because these say made in Japan. So oh, do they? Now I got two confidence. Yeah. Japan <laughs> makes amazing glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, the acetate, the frames, I think, or maybe it was the lenses are coming from uh, Italy. Something like that. On uh, those? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These were actually made in Italy. But uh, yeah, Japan makes, they're like right there. Italy's like. You know what I mean? Yeah. But Japan's right there with glasses. And to be honest, Japan might be better at it at this point. Their glasses, Ditta is like one of my favorite they're, sunglasses brands. And they're their all shooting Japan. scopes are. They're crazy, bro. Yeah. yeah, and they're next level. Japan has a way of taking things and making it better. That's what they do. <laughs> they, they're just they better are, at everything than everybody else in the world, pretty they much. They are pretty, pretty much experts. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we decided to make the Scrids frame. And we were thinking about like what we could do with it. And then Spencer told me that those have a magnet on them as well. So these are the first gen. The yeah. next ones are going to have this thing is going to come off. Yeah, the arrow comes off. Yeah. I actually seen the one that comes off, I think, because yeah. he had like a prototype of it. When we got a fun me. little stunt we're yeah. going to do uh, to release those. So yeah, so these, we made the squints frames. I wanted them to be oversized because obviously, you know, squints was a child wearing adult glasses. And I, I could never find any when I'm playing this role or doing events. I could never find any that fit quite right and had that look of like when I was a child. But uh, I said, maybe if we oversize them a little bit and we get the actual frame and we copy it, um, it'll be better. And so then we did this dope ass, this magnet. So you got these polarized dope ass Italian sun lenses on and they can be removable. You can obviously put your prescription in both or whatever so you need dope. to do. And uh, you know, you guys can't see it, but they're super laser etched been planning it for years you know you got the squints time stone and uh they got the blue light blockers in blue there. blue light blockers in there for all the people that are on their phone or on tech like it's forever important. so we got these coming soon but yeah, yeah when what's the uh timeline uh i'm not sure i'm thinking that uh realistically at this point um this is, a, this is the you just got them right yeah this is literally the sample so um you know, and we have an order in and they'll be here, but we're really like taking our time with it because we want to go all out with the manufacturing of the, not just the glasses, which are probably the quality is too good, to be honest. They're pretty hefty and they're like, they're solid, bro. Yeah. It's, it's like wearing a, a yeah. real high Hold, end Holding frame. them, you feel it. Yeah, you feel it. And then the thing with the magnet is also is that you don't want it to be too wonky because they'll just come flying off. But uh, we want to get the right case and put the whole presentation together well and have this be a, a like a, a you know a 100 piece micro collection between oh, us sick. both that'll just be like a really dope like time capsule of this hell yeah that maybe we'll run again maybe we won't but uh for now we created a uh need to run it with a pack of orbits too a badass that's uh, honestly the first collection. thing that popped into my head is like what are you gonna are you gonna put them in like a baseball bat or like a fucking babe ruth signed baseball yeah so we have a dope It'll be cool. It'll be a cool <laughs> presentation. He's yeah. like, fuck don't it fuck up. it up. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 that's not it. But, yeah, no, no, but no. it will have that effect. Obviously, we'll tie in all of the things that are Sandlot and Squints and, uh, Hell yeah. and have a cool little opening for them. And uh, probably, I would say realistically, like end of summer. You know? Maybe Sick. we'll plan for like baseball playoffs or something so that oh, we can smart. do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and that would be a good timeline for us to get the uh, cases and everything together and all of the, uh, all of the other things that come with them i'm excited i th those look dope also like selfishly i'm just really looking forward to being able to just pop the fucking the sunnies off and yeah. still have the glasses on that's such cool functionality yeah and they're actually like like i was saying for people that don't want to just wear you know the the glasses um they're dope sunglasses bro it has a dope like frame to it john put them on they looked amazing on you as well they also um, they have really great like side coverage too like the, i know that they're oversized, oversized. Yeah. yeah it's it's perfect like yeah. it, it, it does feel like like i'm excited to see them with my prescriptions because i think that those are gonna be much better for like driving and like actually like being able to see you know? <laughs> day -to -day <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah because when you when you i get it yeah the side peripherals it's very slim on those frames exactly. yeah it's also yeah that, that, that's it it's, a, it's the peripheral but shouts to spence because obviously like uh this is an idea of mine that he could actually actualize because he understands that business 100%. and, uh, and has his stuff's crazy with, too. Uh, if you haven't, if you haven't seen or heard of him, it's S T O W N seven on or stone Inc. Is that what the other one is? So hold on. I'm gonna check real quick. Yeah. We'll put it at the bottom of the, of the show as well. We'll, we'll put all the links there and stuff Boom. for everybody. That's good. Oopsies. 
Oh, yeah. Stone Ltd. S T O W N L T S T O W N L T D. Yeah. Exactly. Um, back to high times. What's uh, what's ahead back for you guys times. there, media wise? Huh. Um, you know, just chugging along, bro. It's a tough yeah. time to be in media, so uh, keeping the lights on and making sure that uh, you know, we're covering. I would say the future, but also like trying to keep informing people with how far we've come because there's this thing that's happening right now where people are like judging where we're at by like the, as if they just signed up today and like they forget that like you know like we were legalized in the first place because of like AIDS patients in San Francisco you yeah. know what I mean so like it's medical yeah we went from like a time when like the government was just letting people with AIDS die to like legalizing this plant around it to like now we're actually seeing like what could come of this thing like yeah all things considered, it's a great time to be here, but yeah. also like, don't forget how much great has been done to and, be here. And all the back in my day, let's be honest, this is the best time to be a consumer. A hundred percent. It's actually, so people talk about sour diesel all the time, right? And there's like this whole wave of like, cause nostalgia is such a strong drug that like people remember like when they were 15 smoking this specific strain and they're like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. But like, they forget to re realize that like there was so much other magic that was happening at that time that led you to feel this certain way that if you get it back that if you go back to that now it's something totally different yeah but like all things considered weed is better than it's ever been ever there's more available than ever, ever. it's cheaper than ever ever you know what i mean so like all as a consumer it's the best place to be 100 yeah, it's tough for business variety. but you know yeah bigger variety uh better quality and the the actual things that we're breeding for now I mean, back then it was just bag seeds and bullshit and any breeder was still way off because we didn't have as much uh, knowledge as we have about the plant now. You know, 100%. there is some legends that have done some some deep, deep work like Mandelbrot and these other guys up in the hill that have done some crazy things to open the genome. But, you know, we have some science coming into it now. And as more money pours in, there will well, be more science. We're finally at a point where like universities don't have to risk anything yeah. for doing these tests. And realistically, we need them because they're 100%. the only ones with access to grants well, it's all, big otherwise, enough to actually be able to fund this type of shit. Otherwise, we'd still be in Indica, Sativa, THC yeah. percentage, which like, listen, again, and as talking about dispensaries, you know that people are still shopping by THC percentage, the no matter how many are tell buying them. because of that. Ex and oh yeah, 100%. and then people not are educating the customer, which is the biggest deal. I know this kind of counteracts what I just said, but the weed is better than ever, sure. But I do worry because we've been breeding for so long for THC percentage, what we're breeding out of the plant in that pursuit, right? Flavor. Even growing indoors, yeah. the, the, reason, like the, the reason why the plant got so beautifully smelling and beautifully looking was to either attract pollinators or detract pests, yeah, exactly. right? Now that we're in a totally controlled environment over generations and generations. And they're wondering why it's watering down. Exactly. We're seeing a lot more like the, the, the bud that actually has the highest, that the I believe. The sun actually outputs just a, a totally different immense spectrum. A hundred percent. so many more things out of this plant. I mean, we actually, we're moving back to HPS. You see everyone's, everyone's yeah, 100%. LEDs, LEDs, LEDs. A hundred no, percent. Yeah. They tried, to, they tried to mock the sun. I'm not saying the LEDs not won't get there. But in certain markets that they're building across the country, I mean, it's mandatory to have LEDs and it's not the right wave. Yeah, I 100%. actually, we just had a guy on um, before, his name's Non-Toxic Dad before you got here, and he's all about like detoxifying everything. And honestly, after that episode, I was like, I want some fucking hoop houses because I wanna be outdoors while I'm working in these rooms. I don't wanna be indoors. And I'm like, he was making me think about being at work and feeling anxious. And just knowing that like all of the electricity and the hum and the, the trapped smell and terpene and all of this stuff that is, uh, you know, he's talking about things that are dangerous and, and, you know, unnatural terpenes are one of the most poisonous things on earth, right? So he's talking about dryer sheets and all these things that they're stacking. And I know that I'm like super, because of being around the plant so much that I can be super uh, allergic and you know, 100%. pollen definitely has an effect on me. Smells, things of this nature. So I'm like, citrus I got terps done in and general. I was like, I wanted to be. Uh, you say citrus terps? Citrus terps in general. Yeah, seem Jack to like, will do it for me for sure, bro. Every time I grind it, up something bro. orangey, I'm gonna I'm gonna sneeze yeah. as soon as it fucking yeah, hits yeah, my yeah. nose. Um, I, uh, but I still I love feel the same way. But I definitely I definitely want to get into a greenhouse and get 100%. back to the earth a bit. Hundred percent. Use the sun. Go to the hill. Yeah, just to just to it, it, if, if for no other reason than community service, like it literally is detoxifying the soil by growing yeah. like fucking we should be planting that shit everywhere, everywhere. 
We talked about that. We touched on hemp being a, being a heavy metal detox that pulled things out of the earth. I mean, they planted it at Chernobyl, bro. They, they, did they really? Yeah, they planted it all over there. That's how I did found not out. know that. Yeah, when, when Chernobyl happened, it actually pulls radiation out of the ground. So they planted it. It was a hemp field. That's what they did to That's remediate it. That's dope. Yeah. It's oh, fast man. growing. This is why. I wonder what they're cultivating out there. It's cheap. Yeah, it's cheap. They'll and they grow can with nothing. It. Yeah. They can just leave it. It's fast growing. Yeah. That's I mean, you don't want to smoke realize. that shit. That's no, that, but honestly. That's that atomic shit, that well, radiation. Some, some real radioactive <laughs> Chernobyl, dog. Exactly. <laughs> that's actually. I got some land race from Russia. Oh, hey, shit. Hey, you know? <laughs> oh, man, that's scary to think about. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take any Russian packs. <laughs> uh, plenty of people are smoking Russian packs. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're responsible for the, for the, they might, that culture, Russians and Armenians in general are probably responsible for the state of the game right now. Oh, out here for sure. Yeah. They just, well. I mean, hey, that's genius. They, they could scale it. That's where the old They had access from. to real, to real money to yep. have warehouses and like at scale when it was just. You know, people, people in still garages. Out rooms. Yep. Exactly. So they actually sped up the movement. Um, they watered down the OG for sure, but they 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 changed the game. They for watered everybody. down a lot of stuff, but yeah. hey, that's what happens when you're trying to you know fucking go for scale. Like, that's it. They, My hats off to them, though. I have uh, nothing but respect. Um, anything you want to share? Where people can find you? Things of that nature before yeah. we wrap up. Um, I mean, I would definitely say, obviously, read High Times, but uh, hightimes.com slash weirdos is my baby. Um, that is like the pet project that we've had for the last couple of years that I'm very, very proud of. Um, and that's where the piece is coming out that I've been mentioning all episode. So check that out. Um, you can find me on social at, at John Capetta, J-O-N-C-A-P-P-E-T-T-A. And yeah, at a weed event coming near you. That's right. Thanks, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.